Okay, today is going to be a bit of a departure from our regular vlogs. I'm going to do my first tutorial. Uh, in one of the Facebook groups that I'm involved in, Vloggers of YouTube, a uh, fellow vlogger by the name of Justin Bravo did a quick little PSA about this cool little paracord camera strap. Uh, here's a little clip it of his video. Um, wristbands on Amazon. And anyway, and a link to his channel is going to pop up up here at some point. Now, I figured out how to make it out of paracord. It was pretty simple. It's a uh, it's a basic paracord weave, and it's just a, it's a little take on a bracelet that I actually already enjoy making. So, take a look at my first tutorial. Uh, I hope you enjoy it. If you have any questions, drop them in the comment below. So this is what we're making. It is a paracord bracelet camera strap. Essentially what it is is a Mad Max style paracord bracelet but instead of having the ball on the end here we want the solid loop on that side so we can loop this through one of the straps on the camera itself or around the camera tripod to secure it from things like dropping or theft to make a standard one color version like this you'll need about 10 foot of paracord today we're going to make a two color version so we're going to need about 12 foot the reason being to have this solid loop we want to have one side longer than the other so we can hide the point where the two paracord pieces were put together now this piece is super strong it's it's not going anywhere these outer cords can hold I believe a hundred pound test each which is plenty for what we're gonna need for a camera now the only supplies that we actually need besides paracord which you can get for anywhere from five to ten dollars online if you want to get 50 or 100 feet you could probably pick some of this up at Walmart for I think it's like six or eight bucks it usually comes in 50 foot strands and you can get this at any Army Navy store generally though they're only gonna have some basic colors like black or OD other than the paracord, we're going to need a pair of scissors, a lighter, and if you want the optional plastic buckle or not. This isn't necessary, but it does help to cinch it and make it uh, different lengths if need be. So we will be putting this on. This can go on or off though. If you see, I just slid it over the end, so I can take this off if I want. We're also going to need something heavy to wrap the cord around as we braid it. So I got this 25 pound weight, it's perfect, it's circular. You can do something as simple as use your ankle. Now if you're using a single piece, what you're going to want to do is take the two ends and you're going to pull them through your thumb and your index finger. And what this is going to do is help you get, get it straightened out, you'll get all these twists out of it. See, I'm getting a bunch of twists at the end, so what I'm going to do is kind of hold it loosely and just kind of get some of these twists out. You just got to figure out how it's in there. It's kind of a pain sometimes. And then you get them, them twisted out, and then that will give you the center. This is what you will use as the actual end for the loop. But we don't want to do that today because we're using two colors. We need to hide the junction inside the braid. What you're going to have to do is choose which color you want to be your loop. I chose the green, so I gave myself an extra two foot of green. So what we're gonna end up doing here is we're gonna pull the green. We want to get the loop roughly nine to 10 inches. So we'll take our end of our loop and that's gonna be 10 inches there. So we're essentially going to braid up to about this point. So now what we need to do we're going to go a little bit further to give ourselves some leeway. Once you have your point where you're going to have your knot, what I like to do is just so I don't lose that point, I'm going to tie a small loose knot here. So this will give me roughly my end point. Now, we got all of this tie here. What we're going to do, you're going to want to take the end where your knot is and you're gonna to wanna to wrap that around your wrist. And what that's gonna do is essentially this, this distance from the knot, this right here is gonna be the length of your actual bracelet. 
Now since I'm right on the edge of my seam, what I'm going to do is just slide it up a little bit here and then we're going to fold it over. We have our center point. We're going to take this weight here. We're going to slide it on the other side of the table and we are going to flip it through. What this is going to do is help to hold tension on it when you're trying to pull your knot tight. So, we are going to take this center strand here is always going to be in the middle. Now, this is your junction point from the two different strands. We want that hidden. To start, we're going to take the string that's in your right hand. We're going to take that and cross that over the top. So what we're going to do here is create this loop. Now after that loop, this the, the only the trickiest part is right here. You're going to want to have to hold your point where you want it to start. I'm down a little low, so I'm going to slide it up. You're going to take the string in your left hand. You want to go over, over this string, behind the back, and then through. Now, we're going to want to back one piece of string off a little bit. The reason being is we need to create, we need to create this loop here. We're trying to create the loop, we're trying to create the loop on this side here that we can feed it all through. Now once we have that loop, it doesn't need to be big you're always going to braid back the side that you started crossing on top, you're always gonna cross on top. So now what was in your right hand is in your left. In this case it's easy, you can see, because it's green. So we'll take the black over, under, through. Now once this first couple knots are done, you're in the clear. It goes way smoother. Now I just need to tighten this all up a little bit. I need to make sure this knot here is a little looser because I need that little loop on the end there. Now we're going to want to, okay, I lost my knot a little bit there. We're going to pull these tight and we're just going to keep going. Cross this over, making sure you have this loop. Black string goes over the top, behind the main one, back up and through, and then pull. You're going to notice after a while here, we're going to start getting a ladder work design. I'll get a few more knots in here and then I'll show you that design. Now, once you get the hang of doing this, you'll be able to easily do this while you're watching TV, relaxing. You can make these super quick, any kind of style bracelet too, not just these, <clears throat> these camera strap styles. Now, if you can kind of see, I have this zigzag ladder work forming. Now it's easy to tell if you messed up. Now I should be taking the green back over, but if I did it backwards on accident and I came black over, you're gonna see how, see how that, <clears throat> you can see there, it's easy to see that I went, I went where I went wrong because there's a black piece going over the top. We want the black pieces to be on this side and the green to go on the top. And inversely, if you look on the back, your zigzag pattern is black and your loops are green and you can see you have a green piece going over. Now it's also, you can tell by the fact that these zigzags, you'll stop getting zigzags and they'll, they'll all be going in the same direction. Instead of going back and forth, all of your braids will be coming from one side. And then you just have to go back to that one knot that you messed up, take it back apart and you start over. And you just keep going. We're just gonna keep looping. And once you get the hang of this, this is a basic Solomon knot. This is like the first knot you will learn how to do when you're paracording. It's super easy. Once you get the hang of it, again, you'll, you'll be able to sit there and watch TV. The main thing you want to make sure is that you're giving these a good tug and making sure all these knots are tight. Now, you don't have to worry about this. Again, it's not going to fall apart. And on top of that, it's also going to end up being buried inside all of these knots. So it's, it's going to be strong. And you can see it's starting to get hidden. It will be a little bit visible, 
but you're not really gonna have to worry about it. Only really you will see that it's there. And if you're making a solid color, you're not gonna have to worry about it at all because you're not gonna have that seam. You can kind of work these knots if you need to to help cover this seam up. And just keep going back and forth. We'll skip ahead here. Okay, now we're getting down to our knot here. So we're going to want to get about as close to that as we can because we decided that's going to be roughly our length. Now with this we do have a little bit of leeway. Alright, now that we're at the end here, we're going to want to wrap it around our wrist. Now that's actually pretty good where I want it and uh, I think I'm going to... I think I'm going to do one more. I'll just do one more real quick. Because I'm getting low on the green, but that's okay, because that's right about where I want it anyway. So we'll just do one more. Now, we want to pull it really, really tight. Get it as tight as you can. Okay. All right, we can lose the weight now. You don't even necessarily need the weight. It just helps to put tension on the line to, to get them tighter. So we'll get this out of the way. Okay. So now what we need to do, this is where our scissors and lighter will come in. All right. Now this is nylon, so it will bond to itself. You can kind of see on the end here, it melted, you roll it. So what we're gonna do here though, is you wanna cut it pretty close now, kind of pull that end there. You're going to melt it. You want to get this pretty molten. If you can, kind of try to get it into that blue flame at the bottom there. It helps you to really get a little more direction. Now, while it's still hot, take it and you kind of want to rub it. What we're doing here is we heated it up and it bonded it's melted and now it's bonded to the fibers around it. So now that's not coming out. If you want that out, you're gonna have to pretty much cut it out. So you can kind of see it's, it's not going. I'm pulling on it from behind. It's not, it's not coming out there. If by chance it does come out, really you can just take that one last knot out. You just heat it back up. You gotta be careful here though because I don't want to melt all of the other paracord pieces around it and just melt it back down. I'm gonna do it on the other side. You can cut these tails longer than I did. Here, I'll do this side a little longer. But it just means you have more to work with here. Again, you wanna kinda of grab that tail, pull it as tight as you can. See, like, now that I have all of this, that's a lot more material that I gotta work with, so it gives me more to spread out, but it also means I have to sit here and melt all of this material, which is a lot of material to melt. There's a lot there. That's why you cut it pretty close. See, that's just going to keep going. So what I'm going to do is let that cool for a second. And I'm going to nip that off a little bit to where I want it. That's why we don't cut it that long. Otherwise, you're going to have to sit there forever. And then it actually becomes uncomfortable because you're going to have a large plastic knot on your wrist. Because this will, one of these sides will rub your wrist because no matter which way you flip this, one of these is going to be the inside, one of these is going to be the outside. Now, you don't necessarily need a lighter with a sticker on it because that's going to happen when you're doing this. Now, okay, that's solid. We can go ahead and take this knot out here because we don't need it. You can leave it in if you want. Um, you don't need it, though. That was more there as a marker than anything else. So we'll pull this through. And now we have our infinity loop here. So what we're going to do is take this loop. Now, we made this tight. We're going to kind of squeeze this through, and there we go. Now it's through. I got a little twisted there. Okay, and then if we want to use our plastic piece, all we do is slide the plastic piece through, and there you go. Done. 
slide it on your wrist. You can use this piece to lock it down. Now you don't necessarily need this. Um, the best thing is the tighter this loop is, it will grip itself. That's the, that's the point of the bracelet is that these knots are super tight and you use like little paracord needles to get the thread, to get the paracord threaded through here uh, because it's super tight. And that actually, see there's, you can even hear it. That's holding the tension on this. So if this is on my wrist, that's gonna, that's, that's, it's not super tight because I can move it, but it's tight enough that it's not just gonna move on its own. Now with this, we could take, now it's not gonna work with this camera because it's really, really small. But on some of your larger DSLR cameras, like the one I'm filming on, you could actually take your end and you could feed it straight through. They make little hooks that have the eighth inch screw, but it'll also have a tab on the end that you can screw it and put it in the bottom. You can make a sling, or you can do as my miniature version of Justin Bravo's rig is you can do this and you can wrap it around the head of the tripod and your wrist. So now if someone were to come and try to grab your camera, you're connected. Well, there you have it, my first tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. It definitely wasn't the best tutorial out there, but I did look and I could not find one that specifically showed me how to make the this version with the infinity loop on the end of it. A lot of them had quick release, which is cool, but I was going for the stability and the strength of the one solid piece of paracord. Yes, I showed you how to make one with two, but I made one yesterday with one, and it's, it's pretty much the same exact thing. You're just don't have to hide that connection point inside the braid. With it hidden in there, it's never coming apart. You could probably trust your life to hanging on one end of the paracord while the other end is tied to something else. So again, I hope you enjoyed that, that tutorial. If you do have any of those questions, you can drop them in the comments below. If you want me to make another tutorial on how to make a basic Solomon bracelet or how to make the Mad Max Fury Road bracelet, Drop that below. I'll be more than happy to make another one, hopefully a little bit better now that I've got one under my belt. If you like this tutorial or any of my other videos, please give me that big thumbs up and hit that bell if you wouldn't mind. Uh, you can also hit that big red button down there to subscribe, and uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Good night.